Hey guys, welcome to Toy Shop. Today we're doing a top end on a Polaris Trail Boss. All right, so if you guys are watching this to see what all you gotta tear apart to get to the top end, this is kind of where you gotta be, I think. Right there's a the gas tank cowling. So we got the gas tank off. This is the breather for the clutch, which went on these two bolts right here. So I got that out of the way. And the air box is out. I did take the intake boot off, which this looks kind of rough. I took this motor mount off, which I will come back to this. I took just this front piece of the pipe off because I think I can get to it without taking the rest off. I'm gonna have to take this oil line off right here still. This oil injection line. This is the oil line, goes down to the oil pump. I have that tucked up here right now until we get that that nut down there broke loose. I kind of fought with this motor mount. I took the nut off on the exhaust side, not the nut off towards the clutch side here. And then I reached in here through the top this way with an opened end wrench, well, box end wrench first to get this top nut broke loose. But once you get it out so far, it hits the motor mount. So I just used an opened end wrench and kept shoving the bolt into the rubber until I could tell that it wasn't threaded anymore. And then I just reached in there with some needle nose pliers and grabbed it and wiggled it out of there to get it out of there. It might not be a terrible idea to try to find a shorter bolt or grind this one a little bit shorter when we put it back in, just so we don't have to fight with that again. There was a ground strap on this bottom bolt, so don't forget that when you go to put it back in. So I'm gonna start with these six bolts up here and then we're gonna get the head off and then we'll worry about the jug bolts underneath that. All right, so when getting the head actually wiggled out of here, this stem here does hit. I don't know if this thing just needs motor mounts really bad or what, but this motor moves quite a bit. So I kind of use that to my advantage and stuck my fingers in the exhaust port and kind of picked up on it and kind of got the head wiggled off of these studs. So now we're gonna work on the cylinder bolt. And then if it all goes smooth, I probably won't show you that, but I'm just gonna attack it with a normal box end, open end wrench. If I run into issues, you'll know about it. So that went just how I thought it would. God actually feels pretty good on this. Sweet. All right, let's get the piston off and then let's get this base, this old base gasket cleaned up and then we'll start working on the cylinder. All right, so we gotta get this little sir clip out of here. Oops, well that just went flying. Now that that sir clip's out of there, we should be able to, and we're probably gonna have to tap that wrist pin out. All right, piston is off, the gasket's cleaned up there. I've got the gasket cleaned up on that surface, on this surface on the cylinder, and the base gasket's all cleaned up. So I scraped all that off a utility knife, I parts washed this thing, and I started looking at the cylinder in this, and this thing is kinda really, really ugly. It did run before I did this. This wheeler is not gonna get rode all that hard. Me personally, I'm gonna hone this, put a new top end in it, and we're gonna run it till it doesn't run anymore, but just keeping in mind that next time it needs rebuilt, it's gonna be expensive. So let me show you guys how to hone this. I use fogging spray for this. You want some kind of lubricant, like maybe WD-40 or something like that if you don't have fogging spray. Just want to get a little oil in there and then we're going to use this hone on my drill these hone stones they they collapse and they're flexible you can adjust this spring down here to set the tension i don't want a whole whole lot of tension but i want some tension on this spring the more tension you have the harder it's going to cut and you want to run the drill slow and you want to keep steady forward and back motions I don't remember exactly what it is, if it's like 15 or 30 degree hat cross hatch you want in your cylinder, but you don't want to just put your drill as fast as you can go and move in and out super slowly. You want to have, you want to have really nice cross hatches that are probably like, like this. You don't want super aggressive cross hatches that are like 90 degrees apart. You want them kind of laid down, but you want some cross hatch there. If your drill is going too fast, you're moving too slow. It really is just going to have straight lines around and you want them to kind of coil up and coil down. Because this cylinder is so rough, I'm going to put a little extra spring pressure on this and spend a little extra time going through it. You want to make sure your stones are coming all the way out of the bore in the front and all the way out of the bore in the back. I'm gonna take a clean rag and kind of start to wipe some of that oil off there, kind of inspect how my cross hatches look. I'm not trying to get all of my marks out of the cylinder. I'm just trying to get the high spots knocked down 
and get some cross hatching in there so that the rings will seat. So the whole point of the cross hatching is that it holds microscopic little beads of oil in the crosses of the hone and it helps hold the oil in there for lubrication on the rings. So if it's too smooth, you won't get any lubrication on your rings and you'll wear your rings out faster. So I sprayed the, the cylinder out with carburetor cleaner to get it good and clean. Now we gotta check the ring end gap. Now this, this piston that I bought is by WSM. We need to check the ring end gap. And on this WSM piston, we have a Polaris 250. We need nine to 18 thousandths ring end gap. So what that means is you wanna stick a ring in here in your cylinder, just stick it in there and grab your ring, stick it in there sideways this way, push it in a little ways, and then just kind of use your finger and push it sideways. Now this isn't in there perfectly square, but then you stick the piston in from the back side and you just start pushing, pushing the ring up towards the top with the piston. And because the piston fits in there nice, it will square that ring right up. And now we find the ring gap right there and we just take some feeler gauges and see what size will fit in there. Now that we know that that's good, we got to install the rings. If you look on the bottom of the ring, I'm pretty sure you can't see that from here, but there's a letter R stamped in this on the one side of the ring and not the other. The letters go up. We are going to put the rings on the piston with the letters going the same way. We are going to start oiling up our wrist pin and our wrist pin bearing. I already have the base gasket on there. Don't forget that. I've had to do that a lot of times, get the cylinder started down on the piston and then realize that I forgot to put the base gasket on. So I'd pull the cylinder back off, put the base gasket on and then try to get the ring squeezed back in the cylinder again. So don't forget that part. All right, so we gotta get a circlip started on one of these. I like to put the opposite circlip in first. So then when I'm down on the motor, I only need to put one circlip in. I gotta figure out which side I want. Now, usually for a piston, you have some type of random mark. This is a letter F, sometimes it's a dot. Usually the dot goes towards the exhaust side. That's not gonna happen on this because the F is in line with the wrist pin. So we gotta go with the second rule of thumb. There's little locator pins in here for the rings. The little ring locators need to go on the intake side. So this side of the piston right here is gonna go towards the back of the motor where the intake is. So the F is gonna go on the stator side and these numbers here are gonna go on the clutch side. So I'm probably gonna put this circlip in. So when I put it on there, I can fight with this one here where I can get to it in this area here. Rings are on, so I got the needle bearing sitting in oil. I just like to take an oil cap and fill it with oil, stick this in it, and then I'll open this up, set this in there too, or next, and then kind of wipe that down with oil. And then I'm gonna test fit the needle bearing on the wrist pin in the rod to make sure that that fits. And then once that happens, then it's time to start getting this in. All right, so I'm ready to put this circlip in. Um, I would definitely put paper towels in around the rod so you don't drop the circlip down in there accidentally. And I don't really have any tips on getting the circlip in here because I know I'm gonna fight getting this in here. All I can say is try to make sure it doesn't go down in there and try not to let it fling somewhere into wherever all the 10 millimeter sockets always go. Cause you'll never find it. Um, make sure you don't bend the circlip. If the circlip, you end up getting a crease in it and bending it, um, I would probably just halt the job and order another set of circlips for five bucks or whatever it is. It's not worth the circlip falling out of this and then completely destroying your cylinder because it'll fall out. The piston will eat it. If that doesn't kill it, then the, the wrist pin will start to work its way out. And I've seen them grind like an eighth inch groove the same width of that as that wrist pin all the way up and down the cylinder. So then you're definitely SOL. I've got my locating pins for the rings towards the intake where it should be. And I'm gonna get this circlip in and then we're gonna slide the cylinder over. I'm gonna get the rings lined up on the pins, grab my cylinder, wipe a little oil in the bore, and we're just gonna do one ring at a time. Once it's started, you can kind of push the cylinder down. If 
You don't want to twist this under too much because the rings could open up in one of the ports. Get her started square. I'm going to hook up my oil line right now because I'm right here. All right, now what I like to do is get at least one nut started to hold the cylinder down. And then I'm going to pull the recoil and roll the motor over slowly by hand just to make sure there's no snags or anything. And I put the nut on the cylinder just to keep the cylinder down because if you don't, as the piston comes up, it'll just pick the cylinder up. So I'm going to test that real quick. And then I think I'm just going to snug up the base bolts while I'm here. So some of you experienced guys are going to haze me for this, but there's no way I can get a torque wrench in there. Maybe if I got super fancy with extensions and crow's feet stuff through that. I was told that by hand, I mean, if you've ever turned a wrench before, you should be able to get within five foot pounds probably by hand of at least consistent. So I don't really care what all four of them are at. As long as all four of them are fairly close to each other, you want even torque on all four nuts. As long as we got even torque all the way around, which I'm happy enough with it, we are going to put the head gasket on here and we're gonna put the head back on it. The head's probably more important because all your primary compression is built up on top of the piston. So there's really probably gonna be higher higher compression on top of the piston than there will be underneath it. Underneath the, pist underneath the piston compression is important because that's what forces your fuel air mixture up on top of the piston, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a lower compression regardless, so I'm less worried about down there, but we are gonna torque these ones up here. All right, guys, hope this helped. If you guys got anything out of this video, make sure you click like and hit subscribe. But until next time, peace.